I tell my students, you want to burn the Constitution? You want to shred the Bill of Rights? No, okay. It would be the tragic loss of a historic relic, but my rights are not tied to that piece of paper. I remember the ideals of life, liberty, and property, whether they're written down on paper or not. Why has, has the life in the United States turned so tragic? Well, for the last hundred or more years, we have been inundated, we've been trained, we've been taught socialist ideas. Socialism and communism are evil. I had a young lady tell me that communism is good in theory, it just doesn't work in practice. Try saying that about rape. Rape is a good idea if you could just find the right women. No, rape is always bad. Rape is always criminal because it's a, it's a use of force. Communism is always bad because the first plank of the Communist Manifesto is to abolish private property. The Constitution and communism are antithetical, opposite ends of the, the spectrum. Either you're going to defend private property and make that a high priority, or you're not going to acknowledge that private property exists. Once you learn the fundamentals of socialism and the fundamentals of communism, you look around the United States, and that's all you see. The welfare programs, all of our warfare, sending uh, military into 130 countries around the world, the uh, Obama health care, they're, they're going to uh, institute mandatory vaccination. Why are people so upset about the health care plan? Because it treats you like a slave. The government is using your body as if the government owns your body. We're going to come in with a doctor and a sheriff, you're going to hold your arm out, and we're going to inject you whether you like it or not. <laughs> they're violating your property. Your personal body is property. So, what I try to do with my Constitution class is to focus on these basic fundamentals. The importance of private property, the fact that they are all individual rights, not constitutional rights, and dis compare that to the ideas that we've taken for granted of socialism and communism. And if you've got, you know, half your brain working, you suddenly realize that, well, communism bad, liberty's good. Once you get that, you can never be infected with the socialist ideas again. You'll never allow somebody else to interfere with your rights, take your property, or, or infringe on your liberty. Now, We've got this huge ideological war. Many of us are struggling because we know these basics. We understand why private property is important. But we take it for granted. Well, of course, it's obvious. And as I said in the film, nothing is obvious. The people that around you, your neighbors, your friends, maybe even members of your own family, this is not obvious to them. And we can get mad at them. We can call them all sorts of nasty names. You know, you're a socialist, you're a communist. But that doesn't help the situation. What we need to do is to treat these people, you know, and explain to them what the differences are. They're alive. They like to eat food. They like to have shelter over their head. Whether they understand it at an intellectual level or not, they understand why private property is important. Once we get more and more and more people on board with this private property, individual rights, oh my gosh, the Constitution is a great idea, the problems will start to go away themselves. Okay? But it's not a sprint. All of us, we want liberty like now. We want liberty yesterday. 
Well, okay, that's not going to happen because we are right now outnumbered by people who don't understand liberty and who think that socialism and communism is the way the United States is supposed to work. So our job basically is to understand that this is a marathon. This is going to take time, you can never give up, continue to be persistent, and continue to explain to these people the differences between rights and privileges, the importance of private property, that's happening. All these patriot groups are coming together. They're coming to the same realization. And, you know, we can all take pride that we have had a lot to do with that. We were the early adopters. We had it figured out, and we've been kind of standing around all by ourselves shouting all these ideas. And now other people are getting it, and they're going, hey, this is a pretty good idea. Well. If they want to think they figured it out on their own, that's fine, as long as they understand it. I don't know how long it's going to take for a significant percentage of the population to understand it the way we understand it, but I got nothing better to do with the rest of my life than continue to promote these ideas. I may not be alive when we restore liberty, but that's not really the issue. The fact is that we are restoring liberty, we are making greater and greater progress, and the silver lining in the clouds that we see is that the worse that the government is, the easier it is for our friends and neighbors to see that we've been right. The current administration is helping us by converting people over to our point of view. So. Again, I want to thank you for all the time, all the dedication, all the persistence, the refusal to quit, even when you're, you know, occasionally disillusioned. You get to talk to your friends, you get recharged again, you go back out. That's what it's going to take. We've done this once in this country already. It was called the first American Revolution. We're going through the second American Revolution right now, changing the way that people think. We will, we will get through it, um, but I don't know when. But I want to thank you for being there, and I want you to know that as long as I'm capable of taking a breath, I'm on your side. I will be helping to light the fires of liberty. Thank you. All right.